Good morning. Uh, my name is Bernie O'Rourke and I'm the Extension Youth Livestock Specialist at uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison in the Animal Sciences Department. And um, I've been asked to just talk a little bit about what we've done in Wisconsin as it relates to the VFD, the Veterinary Feed, Feed Directive. And um, I again apologize that I was not able to join you this morning. But uh, this is a pre-recorded presentation as I had a conflict uh, with the time. But um, always available if you've got some questions and you want to email me afterwards, that, that, would, be, that would be great and, and fine. So moving on to kind of our Wisconsin strategy on how we were looking to communicate this whole VFD. Um, and in my case, particular to... The youth audience as I am for the most part cover youth that are in the beef, sheep, swine, and meat goat areas. Um, <clears throat> we have an extension veterinarian who is a county ag agent within our uh, staff that with, with her and I we were discussing about how we might approach this uh, for the youth audience. So we brought in our dairy youth specialist as well as an, our outreach specialist and a graphic designer to kind of visit through what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to put some pieces together. Uh, video production was a discussion in our conversation, but in terms of timing and the amount of other video opportunities that had already been done that were already out there, we chose to um, forego that side of um, how we were gonna manage our, our strategy with the Veterinary Feed Directive in Wisconsin. Uh, so we did provide and put together a fact sheet, and and then we developed a plan on how we would utilize this uh, four-page fact sheet. It was reviewed by our Extension Dairy Veterinarian at Madison, and then um, we did have a Pharmaceutical te Technical Service Veterinarian review it as well. Uh, part of the whole strategy, too, was to dedicate a page to um, our youth livestock uh, site that was just primarily for the veterinary feed directive. So there are a number of links, helpful resources, videos from USDA, and other types of um, information uh, just that came out here lately. The new uh, change for the um, small ruminants and other minor species that veterinarians will have the opportunity to make some decisions in the species that do not have a lot of, um, or flexibility that do not have a lot of products available to them. So all those things are online on our, on our website page there. So what, what was our plan or what did we do? So in Wisconsin, we have regional judging contests. And so part of our strategy was to have this fact sheet for the most part done uh, for our summer of 2016 events. And so we did a uh, um, activity around the veterinary feed directive at a regional contest this past summer. And that was, an, that was the first association that any, anybody would have had um, as it related to this in an activity or an extension program in Wisconsin from the youth side. And this is youth in, in all of our species areas, dairy judging, livestock judging, poultry, um, horses, in this case, um, isn't as, so, so this was part of our first, um, I guess, awareness for the folks that we usually work with. Then we did hand, it, hand this fact sheet out to the youth exhibitors that attended State Fair this summer for us is in August of 2016. Uh, so, so as you can see, we're starting to hit them a number of times. With the help of a couple of our extension uh, work teams, so we have a swine team uh, through extension, and our swine team generated a map of um, veterinarians that will serve in the swine area in specific. In Wisconsin, our, our geograph, um, our species of choice, I wouldn't say species of choice or the species of availability, um, are veterinarians that have do a lot of work in dairy. And so there are quite a few swine producers that are looking for good swine veterinarians. And so our swine team put together a uh, survey and then those surveys were filled out by veterinarians 
that were willing to share their clinic as a source for service in the swine area. So you can see it's starting to populate. And so we've been sharing this link to our clientele uh, where they could utilize clinics for um, specifically in swine, but they could also do some more research as it related to other species that they would need care for or insight from. So we also concentrate it in Wisconsin. We do the Meat Animal Quality Assurance Program for our quality assurance um, food safety um, lesson or, group or program offering. And so the VFD was a lesson where we concentrated some of the time on VFD. And so now you're seeing they're getting hit three or four times with the VFD um, topic. We uh, emailed this information out to staff, uh, both extension and ag teachers in Wisconsin, and they shared this information at their weigh-ins um, that started here in December for beef and will move through roughly about March time. And then of course the, the weigh-ins for us in April and May for swine and, and sheep. We emailed uh, this, this information to all youth exhibitors enrolled in the you know, pertaining species projects in December. And we have been populating social media, uh, primarily Facebook, for updates and information as it relates to VFD, reminders, you know, what did you know, those types of things, just to keep it kind of at the front burner of um, their thoughts. And again, hopefully we're reaching families in a number of ways. Um, we did have some priorities as what we wanted uh, folks to really get and glean from, um, you know, of all of this information, what were the, you know, top five things we wanted them to know. Uh, one, for sure, concentrating on making sure they have a good veterinary client-patient relationship. So if they do need a VFD, they obviously have someone in order to get that from. Uh, the second bullet is the awareness of all the products being fed. Um, you know, not taking any feed from maybe volunteers or folks that might be working with their projects and just utilizing it with their projects without asking questions or without knowing what it is. Um, certainly didn't, wouldn't want them to be feeding something they're not aware of and then uh, heaven forbid it would be a feed um, VFD or a feed antibiotic that would need a VFD and that um, they would then get in trouble. Um, manage your projects so f no, none of these VFDs are needed and that's really really the premise of why this has gotten started by the federal government is is just to minimize the amount of uh, feed antibiotics, especially the ones that cross uh, reference with human antibiotics in our in our animal management. Um, you may not be able to uh, purchase some of these items that you have before in stores that you're you're used to, such as feed supply stores, farm and fleet, tractor supply, mills fleet farm, those types of things. And I went to our local uh, farm and fleet and you can see that the VFD required for purchase sticker, is now on these products. I guess the jury is still out on how many of these supply stores will handle these VFDs in the future. Um, many of the, those that I have conversations with uh, certainly have not communicated um, that they will or, or won't uh, in the future. And obviously, keep records for two years. There will be audits. Um, I think that's just a main theme here that we need to make sure we've got the um, records in place um, because they they will be following up. So here is some examples of our fact sheet and just in terms of time I just want to just give you a glimpse. It was put together by those folks. Um, we wanted it to, to be um, attractive but also really kind of um, pull out the main themes, the what and the why and you know what can you do ahead of time you know of course connecting with a veterinarian the second piece, um, primary this, primarily this VFD record summary sheet was pulled together by our Wisconsin Extension Beef Team, this record keeping sheet. And um, if you'd want to go to their, their website, we've taken some of the information that they've put together and incorporated in here um, because it was such 
a nice short piece. Much of the things that we do with just giving antibiotics in general, injectables or others, but definitely something that you can keep on hand and will need to for two years. And here's an example. This was from the Beef Cattle Institute from K-State, just so kids got an idea of what um, a veterinarian feed directive is, much like a prescription for a human um, drug or sickness or, or type of antibiotic that would be used. Here would be an example of what it, what it would look like. And then the last thing was part of our activity that we worked in sharing with partners is just thinking about the products that they have at home and what what would some of those need or not need a VFD. So um, again, I apologize for not being with you today. Uh, this is kind of what we did in Wisconsin, the VFD Wisconsin style. Um, and I think it's going so good so far. We haven't had a ton of questions and certainly there are many more down the road that will come about. But if you do have questions or, or um, you know, insight, certainly this is just one way to take it. Um, I'm always learning for others and certainly could use some, use some information of what you all tried and true and had some good experiences with or, or needed some more thought, you know, towards the process. And so um, I'm available through my email number there, um, email address, I mean, if you're interested in connecting with me. Um, Again, I think I will stop here and pass it on to the next speaker. And again, please don't hesitate in, in contacting me if you've got any, any questions.